Bibliophiles of the Internet. My name is Adriana and today I'm here to bring you a Top 5 Wednesday video. Today's topic is our Top 5 Debut Novels. From what I understand, this topic is basically a free-for-all because your list does not necessarily have to be comprised of only recent debuts, but any book as long as it is the author's first. I'm really excited to do this topic because I really geek out over things like this, so I am beyond prepared. So with all of that being said, let's get into my top five for this week. At number five on my list is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I feel obligated to mention this book on my top five list of favorite debut novels simply because this is Stephen Chbosky's first and only book. Seriously, that just blows my mind. He is literally the authorial definition of one hit wonder. One and done. He rocked the world so hard with his first book that he did not have to write another one. That's insane to me. At number four on my list is The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. I admire Jandy Nelson so much and I have so much respect for her as a writer and when I stop and think about all of the insanely complex topics that she tackled in this first book, I think she handled it with such finesse. I guess what's really great about this debut novel is that Jandy Nelson shared so much of herself with her readership. She was very open, she was genuine, and that totally came through in every single page. At number three on my list is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. More than anything, I am really drawn to magical realism because it's a really special style that takes a particular kind of writer and requires sort of a poetic approach, and there are very few authors who can do that well. When I read this book, I was shocked to find out that it was Leslie Walton's first novel because she handled magical realism so well and the way she incorporated all of these surreal elements into the story was so special and she's on her own level. In my opinion, this is a fantastic debut novel because not only does it establish Leslie Walton's unique voice within the writing community, but it also really earns her loyalty from readers like me. And I will definitely be keeping an eye out for any of her future books because I want to read them. I don't care what they're about. If she wrote them, I want to read them. At number two on my list is The School for Good and Evil by Soman Chainani. This is definitely my favorite middle grade series at the moment. The third and final installment in this trilogy is probably my most highly anticipated 2015 release right now. What I really like about this trilogy is that even though the target demographic is a slightly younger age, Soman Chainani does not write in a condescending way. This book is very eloquent, it's beautiful, it's complex, it's whimsical, and it's so much fun. And if you have not read it or heard of it yet, please, please, please look it up because it's incredible. And when it comes to the number one debut novel on my list, I have a tie. The first book I would definitely consider number one is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. For this book, I do not have words enough and I did not have sticky tabs enough. This book is an incredible feat of literature. That is just the bottom line. What really kills me when I think about this book is the characters because they are all incredibly well-rounded. They're so complex, they're so nuanced, they're so thoroughly explored. And how she manages to accomplish that is also something that totally blows my mind. And that is the fact that this book is written with an omniscient narrator, which is almost impossible to pull off but she makes it seem so easy and so natural and that's how I know it took a lot of work to pull that off and she does it so successfully. So I have nothing but great things to say and praises to sing for this book. I will link my Goodreads review for this book down below in case you want to know more of my thoughts and you want to know more about it, but I highly, highly recommend it and I wish all of you would read it. And my other number one pick, shocking no one, is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I wasn't sure if this was Madeline Miller's debut novel, but I looked it up and it was, in fact, the first thing that she published, which I simply can't 
fathom. I truly, truly can't. If I had to use one word to describe this debut, I would say glorious. And this kind of goes without saying not only for this book, but for all of the books I have mentioned on this list. But obviously this finished product is not the first draft. Like Madeline Miller did not wake up one day, go to her computer and write it all in one go and be like, this is perfect and ready for publication. Take it now. Obviously this finished product is the result of rounds upon rounds upon rounds of editing and revision. But even taking that into account and knowing that this finished product is the result of one woman's hard work, it still baffles me that this is her debut novel because I mean, what a way to come out of the gate. As you all know, I just have so many feelings about this book and about Madeline Miller's writing in this story and I just can't even talk about it anymore right now because it's too much. It's too much. So these are my top five debut novels. In the comments down below, please let me know what are some books that you consider to be iconic debuts from your favorite authors. So that is everything I had for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye.